good sports this morning. Please join me for a moment of prayer. God, you are so good. All the time. Thank you so much for the gift of laughter. That even in the midst of that, we honor you and all that you do and have done for us in our lives. God, that the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart find themselves to be holy, 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 and acceptable in your sight, for you are my God, my rock, and my redeemer. Hear these words in the name of the Christ. Amen. Amen. So, as we get started this morning, um, (laughs) so much for that. This morning, I want to tell you a story. Normally, I would read it to you, but not today. Today, I'm going to follow, follow, follow the words that I hear in my heart. I want to share with you the idea of what it means when we say that we are gone fishing. It started for me in hearing a new, a story from the Gospel according to Luke, the fifth chapter, the first through 11th verses. And this is a story where it's the sunrise of the day and Jesus had been teaching. And no matter where Jesus went, there were more people than he knew what to do with. So here he was at the shore because the crowd was pushing in so far that he was starting to stand in the water. I don't know if I tell that'd be a little bit uncomfortable for me because I can't swim, but that's okay. I keep doing water stories every time I come to y'all. Maybe I need to take some swimming lessons. 
But Jesus finds Simon and he says to him, he said, you know, can I borrow your boat? And I need you to push out just a little bit from the shore. And Simon obliged. He pushed out from the shore and Jesus began to teach the crowd. I love scripture because it doesn't tell us what he talked about. So we get to kind of imagine what he talked about. And when he was done, he went to Simon and he said, do me a favor. Let's go out into the deep to do a little fishing. Well, now, here's the thing you got to know about going out and doing a little fishing in the daytime. Where they were, geographically, we know that as the Sea of Galilee today. And when you fish in the Sea of Galilee, that's a nighttime activity. And so here is Jesus talking to Simon smack dab in the middle of the morning, saying, let's go fishing. So I can imagine Simon just kind of go, brother, you don't know how this works. <laughs> but he did it anyway. He pushed out into the deep, and this is just one of those amazing fish stories where he got out to the deeper part of the water, and the fish began to jump into the boat with them. Now, I'm not a fisherman, and I remember growing up, um, if you had to take me fishing when you went fishing in my family, it was probably a bad thing, because I had not yet mastered the idea of be still and know. Um, I wasn't going to touch anything when I realized that the bait was still alive and you wanted me to put it on the hook thing, that just wasn't going to happen. I would rather throw them in the water and watch the fish come to me and eat them, <laughs> although my grandmother would say, sweetie, we're trying to catch them, not just feed them. <laughs> but here they go. They are out in the deep, and the fish began to jump into the water. So many fish that their nets began to break, and the boat began to sink. So Simon goes to the edge of the boat, and he cries out to James and John, who are at the shore, and he's like, hey, come here. You are not going to believe this. And by the way, bring the boat. So they bring the boat, and now they have two boats full of fish. Nets breaking, boat's about to sink. They go back to the shore, and Jesus says to them, he said this, when, when Simon saw this, he said to Jesus, he said, Jesus, go away, man. He said, because I am a sinful man. For all of those that were with him, they were amazed at the catch of fish that they took. And Jesus said to him these words, don't be afraid, because from now on, you will be catching people. And then Jesus did that thing that he did. He went away and they followed him. They left behind the biggest catch of their lives and they followed Jesus. Now, normally when I look at this scripture, I beg the question as to, why in the world would we leave the greatest thing that had ever happened to us? So from that point is where I jump off this morning, because this morning I am here to disturb the peace, just so you know. So if you're not comfortable with that, I apologize now. Because the idea of why would they walk away from the greatest thing that had ever happened to them. Now, I love my job, and every day, the deeper I wade out into this ministry thing, I am charged with the idea of how do I do this and that. And I like doing this because I'm comfortable in my job. I know what I'm doing. I feel, com I feel competent. It's not scary anymore. And Jesus says, come on, go with me. And I'm like, but what about, what about, and what about? This morning, the reason it disturbs our peace is because we are being called beyond the greatest thing that has ever happened to us because there are even greater things waiting to happen to us. But if we stay in that space where we are comfortable, it feels all good. You know, the chair has the shape of our butt in it and the, the air feels just right in the room. We know how to make the coffee. We know where the good snacks are. If we don't leave those spaces, we will never find the better coffee, we'll never find the better snacks, and we will never be able to engage fully the better opportunities. Now here's the thing, beloved, we are called to be blessed beyond measure. Not just a little bit, not just a little slice. We are called to be more than we could ever, ever, ever imagine. Now, my days of having just enough money to pay the bills, my days of living small, all of these things today I say enough is enough. It is time, if you're willing to follow, not me, 
because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just following the light of the Christ that is within me. If you are willing to follow the light of the Christ that is within you, there is nothing but blessing that awaits. Now, how many of you could use a little blessing in your life? Can I get an amen? amen? That's what I'm talking about. Now, here's the thing about going fishing. When I was a kid, it was the longest day because you had to get up early and they told you to put on your old clothes and come on and get in the car and we had to go deal with stuff that smelled weird and it was hot out there. And have you ever sat in the lawn chair that has the weaving stuff in it and the metal frame? That is not built for comfort. It is not ergonomically correct. Then they gave me a cane pole with a very thin piece of string and some wiggling on the end of that hook and said, okay, go sit right there. I was like, so not going to happen. <laughs> I was a daydreamer and a gazer. I spent my day like this. And my grandmother was forever going, child, be still, sit down. But here's the thing about being blessed, beloved. We don't have to be still and sit down. Every day is not a long day. We don't have to put on our old clothes. We don't have to always deal with something that smells or feels weird. We get to stand in the light of our own truth. Amen? Amen. Yeah. See, when we go fishing, it is the life that we live, the truth that we know. That's what calls other people. I don't ever have to open my mouth and do anything because I believe that what sticks with people longer than anything that I will ever say are all the things that I always do. This is when we all become teachers of one another, not through our word, but through our deed, because that is the light of the Christ within us. Jesus didn't do anything. He just hung out. He said, let's go fishing, man. He got out there. He probably went, whoa. I know it's going to happen quite like that, but that's good. I rock. Add a boy. <laughs> and then he left with them, and they followed him. They followed him, not because he said, come on. They followed him because he said three words that were difference-making words. He said, from now on. That meant that those two boatloads of fish, that was nothing compared to the goodness, compared to the greatness that God has placed in our path, sitting there with our name on it. I don't get to quote Joel Osteen often because he's so funny and I like him because he's Southern. And he says y'all a whole lot. He can smile and preach a sermon. That's really a cool thing. But one of the things that he says relentlessly is that the blessings have our name on it. They know who we are. That comes to us from the book of Deuteronomy, which I don't get to quote a whole lot because we don't tend to like that. But in Deuteronomy, it says that we are blessed in the city, that we are blessed in the field, that we are blessed wherever it is that we go. It doesn't even matter. But I don't know about y'all. I need a little more information. I need to know exactly where in the world am I going? What do you need me to do? What time are we going to arrive and what's for lunch? <laughs> I need that kind of information. Yeah, And so God has found a way to make sure all of those details arrive because God knows me. But here is the deal. It doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't matter what's for lunch. The only thing that matters is that when that still small voice that lives inside of us says come, says go, says speak, says stand, says engage, says pray, says breathe that we are willing to do those things. Because each and every one of us has medicine for the world. The world is waiting on that truth which we hold and we embody. It is the very truth that we are. If I never encountered truth principle, if I never encountered unity, there is a purpose for my life. And I know that because Jeremiah 28 and 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, a future and a hope. That if I was willing to do the T word, which is trust in that, and know it is so, when I show up, if I never have a story to tell, my only truth is that I trusted God for the details, for the overcoming, for the breaking through that I was willing to leave the thing that I had done all of my life because that's what P. 
Peter, James, and John did. They left their profession and they followed him. He didn't even say where he was going. Had a problem with that for a while. I was just like, but where'd he go? Where was he going? Did it matter? Because the light of the Christ is here in each and every one of us. That it doesn't matter where we're going. It doesn't matter what we're charged to do. Only thing that matters is that we just go. There's a Christmas special that comes on and it has a song in it that says that put one foot in front of the other and soon you'll be walking across the floor. Put one foot in front of the other and soon you will walk out of the door. Beloved, I encourage you that as you are able this week to be willing to put one foot in front of the other and trust the outcome. The details have already been worked out for us. When somebody says, where are you, Reverend Rose? She can say, I'm gone fishing. <laughs> I can actually hang a sign on my desk and on my door said, gone fishing, and it is true. Because I have gone from the place where I was comfortable into that which appears to be unknown at a time that I would not normally go to do something that I believe I know how to do. I have gone fishing, not for myself, but for the very kingdom that surrounds us, the very kingdom of heaven that we know doesn't exist beyond the clouds, that it is everywhere present to us right here, right now, for the good of all of those who encounter each and every one of us. So when you get home and people say, what are you going to do this week? Girl, I'm going fishing. And it's going to be all right. It will be all right. Because at some point, the very reason that we sit in this room is someone went fishing before us. They told a story. They shined a light. They took a breath. They prayed a prayer. And whatever that divine interaction and appointment was, it led us to this moment. Because I am here today at the grace and mercy of so great a cloud of witnesses that prayed prayers, sang songs, and hovered on my behalf. And now it is time, my friends, as we are willing and as we are able to follow the light of the Christ that is within us, to trust in the very plan of God that is woven into the very fabric of our DNA. You see, there's a, a phrase that I learned and I coined when I first came to Unity that says that the soul always knows what's up. Can we say that together? The soul always knows what's up. And see, if we are willing to trust that, that the soul already knows, and all we have to do is show up and shine, that's where our world will start to change. So if anybody asks you why you are going fishing, tell them that you are going fishing because from now on, a great work will be done in you. From now on, goodness will be made manifest in your life and in this world by you. From now on, you will stand in your truth. From now on, you are no longer willing to live small. From now on, enough is exactly enough. From now on, you are choosing to be the very blessing that you were created to be. Amen? Amen. So let's go fishing, beloved. Amen. Woo! Amen. And so it is.